Hey everyone, this is Phil. This is my Surface Pro 8, and today we're going to try to swap out the SSD drive on this and make it one terabyte. So my uh, Surface Pro 8 is originally 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 256 uh, gigabytes of storage. And I have already once swapped out the SSD uh, to 512 because 256 is just unreasonable. Um, but the reason that I wanted to do document uh, the switch to this new uh, drive is that uh, the SSD that I got, uh, this thing here, right here, is, an, uh, is a uh, Kioxia uh, BG5 model uh, SSD drive. And this is a PCIe uh, 4.0 drive. So there have been people on Reddit saying that uh, they didn't have any luck uh, trying to install this on the uh, Surface Pro models. And uh, they had some crashing issues with this, um, presumably because it consumes more power than the uh, previous iterations of the SSD drives. But there have also been uh, posts saying that this has been resolved via a uh, firmware update. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, install this just in the regular way, uh, which you can find documented in a very good uh, guide on Windows Central, uh, which is what I will be following as well. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we might have to, for example, clone the drive from my uh, current drive which already has the power settings uh, for AHCI um, installed, um, which should re resolve these issues as well. So let's pop this open and uh, let's see if we can get this drive working in this machine. So you can see the uh, Surface Pro 8 has this little compartment here for the S SSD drive. And uh, you only need to pop this open with a uh, SIM removal tool. So you just put this, you just poke this in into this little hole here. Then uh, the lid pops open and you just take this out and you can see the SSD drive is right here. Uh, and of course, while we're doing this, uh, confirm that the laptop is of course switched off. And then we will need a uh, Torx T3 driver. This is usually included in every uh, good toolkit for electronics repairs and stuff like that. Uh, it's a very small uh, star-shaped Torx driver. And uh, we'll just use this lid as a tray because it has that convenient cutout here. And then we can just remove the SSD. And as you can see, uh, the SSD drive is enclosed in a little uh, cover, which is uh, made out of metal and functions as a heatsink. So we will just pry this off. Um, if you just gently pry it off uh, the back ends, you can see it's uh, hinging on each of the corners and it comes off really easily uh, once you've gotten those corners loose. And then uh, this is of course already a uh, exchanged drive. This is my previous uh, BG4 Kioxia drive. And, and we will pop in the new one, put that into the backside. Uh, and we'll just uh, go ahead and remove this excess thermal paste before we in fully install the, pre the new one. I'll just wipe off this excess and then we'll just put on some new thermal paste. I went with this uh, Corsair thermal paste. So the Windows Central Guide uh, just said to put about half P on it, which is an interesting unit of me measurement, um, come to think of it. And then we will just replace that top cover. And again, if you slot in the backside covers, cover corners first, then it'll go right on there. And make sure that 
the black side of the metal is on the outside. And then it'll just snap into place. Okay, and then we should be able to just replace this into the slot it's designed to go into. And then we'll take our little screw and screw in that SSD. And then we can replace the cover. Okay, there we go. All right, and now uh, we'll need our uh, recovery drive. Um, I have already prepared this recovery drive because uh, it takes a long time. Um, you have to create a recovery drive uh, from the recovery drive tool in Windows. And then uh, you have to download the recovery files for your specific model of the uh, Surface Pro from the uh, Microsoft website uh, using your uh, serial number, and if you don't, don't know, um, the serial number on the Surface Pros is under the kickstand, um, but it is also uh, inside the Surface app on your device. So you just uh, start up the Surface app and this will have the uh, information as well. And then we will connect our little thumb drive. Let's turn this on. And you'll notice uh, I'm also holding the uh, power, the uh, volume down key, uh, which should get us into UEFI, uh, which is the BIOS on these machines, basically. Uh, and you'll also uh, notice that I've connected power. For some reason, uh, it wouldn't boot on without the power. So I think you have to be connected uh, to the power if you don't have the uh, Windows installed on there. And then uh, it'll go into language se selection. Um, so let's go with, I usually go with uh, English United States and then uh, keyboard layout. My keyboard is usually Japanese. And then we'll have this option to recover from a drive at the top of the screen and that'll load uh, the system from our recovery drive, hopefully. And then uh, there's no files on there. I wish there was just an option to just go ahead and uh, do it like this, but just remove my files. We'll do a quick uh, format, I guess, of the SSD, and then let's go recover. And that should uh, bring us right into Windows installation. So it started uh, the Windows install process and I expect this will take a while. All right, so uh, the percentage countdown has reached 100%. Uh, let's see what it does now when it starts again. It should go right into Windows setup. At least I hope so. And this is where uh, people had issues. Um, they were saying that with the new uh, PCIe uh, 4.0 drives, they couldn't even get through the setup process because it kept crashing and giving them blue screens of death. And I'm hoping um, that, uh, as was stated in a few newer posts, um, the firmware updates in the newer win Windows updates uh, from uh, the past half a year or so uh, have resolved this issue. And uh, this will just uh, be able to install like normal and not uh, abort. Um, some of the uh, posts were uh, 
some of the posts were theorizing that it might be connected to the higher power consumption of the PCIe 4.0 drives, um, which the old system, of course, wasn't able to uh, supply because it was designed for the 3.0 drives. Right now it's looking good, uh, so I'm hoping we'll just get all the way through. The way while this is going, uh, I'll just show you the SSD enclosure that I got. Um, this is from Orico, and uh, it's a transparent design, which the backside is actually much nicer, because um, this has just the most beautiful details on the uh, circuit board there. And I'm a big fan of uh, transparent or translucent uh, designs. Uh, they have show, been showing some uh, signs of coming back into fashion. Uh, as you know, there was a lot of uh, translucent uh, designed gadgetry uh, in the 90s and the early aughts. Uh, so we would have uh, transparent cameras and transparent uh, like game, gaming uh, consoles and uh, controllers. Of course, the uh, Nintendo 64 is the most uh, famous example of this. And I'm a back, big fan of this uh, aesthetic, uh, and I'm really hoping that it'll stick and they'll bring a few more of those back, because um, that'll be fun. That's looking good. It hasn't crashed so far, so I'm pretty hopeful. There we go. United States. region I'm in Japan Japan nope uh, Japanese layout please uh, well, I can do that later let's connect okay we'll connect to my pocket Wi-Fi thankfully I have a pocket Wi-Fi almost always on me. Five. If you're ever near me, you can now connect to my Wi-Fi. I don't think anyone will ever be close enough to me to connect to this. Checking for updates. I'm pretty sure we'll get some updates here. I'm sitting back, but <laughs> it's very hard to relax when you're always waiting for your device to crash, isn't it? Okay. It's still looking pretty good. Let's name your device, okay. Just a moment. It has been a few moments now, quite a few. And we will sign into my Microsoft account. And then of course we will set up uh, Windows Hello. Okay, all set. Uh, create a pin. Okay. Just go with everything on that. Privacy settings. Uh, and then you have your customization 
things, but this can all be done after the install as well. So we'll just uh, go with the standard here. Um, my Android phone, I actually like this uh, functionality quite a bit. Uh, and especially with the Surface Duo, it works really, really well because you can mirror your entire screen. You can access all the apps on your device uh, on your Windows computer. Uh, you can copy and paste in between the devices uh, and it's just super uh, well integrated and I really, really enjoy that, uh, that experience. So we'll definitely pair my uh, Surface Duo to the Surface Pro right now. Uh, yep. Scan the QR code. My QR code scanner of uh, choice is of course uh, Google Lens. I will just go into Google Lens and that'll just uh, scan the, sco the code. Um, code shown on PC. T. And then we'll see. We'll get a sign in notification again into Windows. Allow. Done. Okay. Now uh, I have my uh, Surface Duo and my Surface Pro linked again. This is great. 365. already have office obviously I think every, everyone who buys a, a surface pro just still gets a 365 subscription with it don't they I've owned this for two, two years so I'm of course paying for 365 but for all that you get with it it's worth it and now uh, we're doing something again for a few minutes, whatever that means. Okay, and we're installed. Uh, so as you could see, I didn't have any crashes, uh, didn't have any issues. Um, and uh, now if we go into settings, uh, it'll freeze on us, of course. Oop. It didn't give me any blue screens of death, so I'm not quite sure if this was intentional. I'm, I'm leaning um, to think that this is intentional and part of an update, um, but we will see once this gets done. Uh, maybe e this is either uh, recovering from a crash now or it's updating. So I'm hoping it's the latter. not showing anything so a bit hard to judge I could probably bring up the event log but uh, I'm not gonna do that right now because that's a hassle and let's look at storage and we now have 951 free gigabytes which should, or 905 uh, free out of uh, 951, which should uh, give us enough to work with. So the reason I wanted to swap out my drive uh, was that it was already getting pretty full. Uh, I take a lot of pictures and I have, uh, of course, these videos 
uh, to edit as well. And some of those are stored still on my computer. Um, and it was getting kind of cramped. Uh, I was still able to shuffle things around to make it work, but uh, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of free space. Um, so right now um, we have some space again and uh, let's check the performance of the disc as well. So that should, the performance of the disc should also have improved. And I want to see if that makes a difference, for example, with Lightroom um, and uh, with uh, DaVinci Resolve, uh, which are heavy, uh, heavier uh, applications that uh, have definitely slowed down for me on this machine. In retrospect, I might have uh, been better off uh, getting the i7 version, but you're always wiser afterwards. Okay, so for the moment, everything is working. Um, I'm going to run a benchmark uh, right now to see if the performance from the actual drive has improved. Uh, and after that, by the time you're watching this, I'll have used this machine at least a week anyways. Uh, so I will just uh, report back if I have had any crashes uh, and how the performance has been. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, for the moment, it looks like this installation has succeeded without any major issues. Uh, we did have that one reboot, but I do think that's from a Windows update. Uh, and yeah, uh, let's do the benchmark and then we'll be done. All right, so uh, you can see there's a significant uh, improvement in most of these, these numbers. Um, especially, of course, in the right uh, section. Um, as I have uh, seen it described online, the previous BG4 uh, SSDs from Keoxia were optimized more for read over write, uh, and uh, the current generation is uh, optimized for both equally. So you can definitely see there's uh, very similar numbers uh, compared to the BG4, which was significantly uh, better at reading than writing. So yeah, I'm uh, so far, I'm very uh, happy with how this experiment went. Uh, I will uh, report back in about a week or so and uh, see how the performance has been uh, over actually using this device. Thank you, Past Phil. So it has now been about a week and a half since I installed that SSD. Uh, I am happy to report there's been no issues at all. Uh, no crashes or uh, performance hiccups whatsoever. Uh, the performance, as far as I can tell, is improved quite a bit, um, with the caveat that this is, of course, a clean Windows install, uh, and the previous one was at least half a year, maybe a year old uh, at that point. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but yeah, very satisfied so far. Thanks. Back to the studio. All right, that's it for today. Um, thank you for, so much for joining me. If you have any questions uh, that I might be able to answer, uh, then drop them in the comments below. Uh, comments are always appreciated. Uh, and I uh, think we'll go back to photography next video. Um, but uh, if you want to see more gadget uh, related stuff, uh, I'm sure I'll have time for that as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again.